Hey everyone, so today I wanted to go over a slightly different topic. I wanted to go over how to handle being a new player in the era of Kaigen. Because things have definitely changed a bit. Most of the newer content is going to require at the very least level 75 units or Kaigen tier units, depending on what content you're trying to conquer. Um, so the approach is a little is it's a little bit different, but it's a lot of the same. So in general, when you start out in the post Kaigen era, you're gonna need a carry. And you really should re-roll for a carry because this is going to help you get through most of the old content with relative ease without needing to build up to it. For instance, you should be able to solo Lofia EX with a single unit that you pull at the very beginning with little to no issues. Meanwhile, the Babel MVEX obviously is going to crush you with a single unit. But you want to at least be able to do things like Lofia EX and Rahu EX. You want to be able to get some of those older Job Plus events done easily. So that way, if they rerun, you can get them done without missing them. Because so, a lot of those units can become core later, especially Rahu, and to a lesser extent, Lofia, among others. Also, you want to be able to handle the Job Plus events that are going to be coming out. For instance, the Dorothy EX, when that comes around, is going to be a great Job Plus, especially for new players, because Dorothy EX, or Dorothy Plus rather, is actually great even at level 75 because she already has a lot of relative bulk which allows her to survive in a uh, post kaiga meta even if she isn't kaiga now it's less than ideal but as a new player you, the one thing you're gonna have to resign yourself to is the fact that it's going to take a very long time for you to catch up so as long as you're willing to put the time and the effort in there's absolutely no reason why you can't catch up so when i started in japan it was about the same time that the Desert Babel was released. So I actually joined Japan at a later date than you guys currently are in Global at the time of making this video. And as of now, I'm sure you've seen my, uh, my entire account by now. I have a relatively good cast of characters, all of which seem to be a, at least decently high level. Um, I, I do my best. I have a lot of max Kaigans, or at least I've maxed out the Kaigan air the areas in the Kaigan that I want to max out, and I've moved on to other characters. I've had to drop characters here and there and move on to different ones, and then come back later to characters I've been working on before. But all in all, within about five or six months, I'd say I could probably handle most content the game threw at me. So. I specifically have this on Nigel right now because Nigel was my carry unit. He was one of the very first units I pulled and between him and a at level 75 and a level 70 ot, I managed to climb to the floor 100 in the Vita Tower within 20 days of starting the account. And I could have gone faster if I had tried a bit harder or if I had gotten a little bit luckier on my initial pulls. But all in all, I'd say it went pretty successfully. So what makes a good carry unit? Well, namely, a lot of the limiteds that are going to be coming out in the coming babbles, like Gerard, Nigel, um, maybe Ankh, um... Ren, a, a lot of these limited units are going to be really good carry units because these units were basically designed to be a low to mid tier Kaigen unit at level 75 and all you have to do is get them to 75. Now, getting a limited unit to 75 is a different battle altogether. You're going to need to get yourself elemental frags, you're going to need to get yourself uh, all the gear and stuff to triple job max them, but there's absolutely no reason why in a post Kaigen era you wouldn't be able to do this. Now remember, you're going to have all of your elemental frags available to you from the Vita Tower. You're going to have events that you have not completed yet, so there is a plethora of elemental shards that 
you have not gathered yet as a new player that you can gather and within a month or so you should be able to get your carry completely up and running at level 75 with a triple job max such as my nigel here now my nigel has obviously grown a little bit since then especially since he did eventually become farmable but that is something else that you have to really keep in mind that some of these carry units will become farmable later um and you are essentially going to be wasting your frags but there's a reason why i say this is good and that is because the more content you can get done early the faster you can snowball yourself into later game content the less you miss in the long run um a lot of limited events you're going to want to be able to complete especially if a hard collab event came out i know that during the full metal alchemist event new players just could not complete the highest end exs and they missed out on some rewards because of it so just being able to complete content is a great thing and it's also going to help you keep with the game longer because it, it just not being able to complete content doesn't feel good I know when Neo Vita first came out, I wasn't quite ready for it yet because my dark team was absolute garbage and you needed a dark team for the first floor. And the first floor just absolutely destroyed me. And it felt pretty bad, I'm not gonna lie. It felt pretty bad, but I kept working on my dark team and I came back later and I absolutely crushed it. So, Nigel will be coming out in the next... Uh, Babel, or at least he should, the Rathorus Babel, and he is a good option to pull for. Uh, long term, Nigel probably isn't the strongest unit in the game, he definitely isn't the strongest in Thunder, but for a long time he kind of helped hold up Thunder, and if you somehow manage to pull like Roxanne too, you might be, thread spend, uh, uh, you might be spreading your Thunder Shards a little thin at that point. But the point I'm trying to make is you can try to complete yourself a team around these carry units. And you're going to kind of want one for each element. Uh, Nigel was definitely my thunder carry. And even to this day, I still haven't really leveled my aught at all. And I used her for the first two to three months just on almost every single team I ran. And that's just because she was a great carry unit. At level 70, she could get a lot done with very little investment. And I also say that Ott is probably a really good carry unit just because of that. And once again, the thun the wind frags that I put into her, because I did put wind frags in, who I can actually put her up to, but um, I did put wind frags into her, um, and I don't use her anymore, but I don't regret putting the wind frags into her, because she helped me complete content faster, and it helped me not miss certain things. So, as for what makes the best carry units, I uh, I highly suggest asking in the global Discord or maybe in the subreddit because the fact that the Magna Historia uh, line exists in global means that the units that f are from Japan that worked very well for this might not be the ideal units you want in global. Roxy is a monster. We've been over this before. She is a great carry unit to get when you start the game. Now, that much has not changed. You've always kind of wanted to get a carry unit in the beginning. That much has not changed. The, ne the biggest change is actually going to come in how you decide who you farm. So, when you choose who to farm in global like six months ago you basically choose okay who's going to benefit me the most at let's say 70 or 75 or 80 depending on what you need and you would get the unit to level 75 and then you might drop the unit for another unit as you start rounding out your mono teams and then after that you push up well in japan you need to think a little bit deeper than that you need to start planning out your kaigen teams ahead of time for instance Let's take a quick look at uh, Spica, because she makes a really good example of this. Spica, great unit. SS tier unit. She's insanely powerful. But here's the problem with Spica. She's a 5-5-5 five, five, five Kaigen. That is a lot of time. And if you want Spica on your team, you're going to have to start farming her day one. 
just no joke like even if you don't have spica yet you literally have to start farming her day one if you want her usable in like five to six months that's just how it is you need to think several months in advance right now level 75 is a 50 day commitment kaigen is a multi-month commitment and that's a big difference um, as to whether you should farm Spica, that's really up to you and what you think you need. If Spica is one of your favorite characters, I do highly suggest farming her. She's a great unit. But that doesn't necessarily mean she is the best unit to farm for this. Um, for instance, while you don't have Aisha yet, Aisha was more of a uh, an option for me. Because she became farmable not when I joined, but not too long after. Like a couple months and she was a lot more powerful than spica early so farming her made a lot more sense and so i did the moment she became available let's go over to uh wind because um i want to show you something else here so this is setsuna as i'm sure everyone knows and setsuna is pretty powerful early she's not like super great but the problem is, is Kaigen didn't make her much better. So even if you really like Setsuna, do you really want to put down the multi-month commitment to farm her if she's just going to be overshadowed by units like Ramses, who's just a straight up 553, 554, or 555 Kaigen? You know, it. you really need to think long and hard about what you want your teams to look like Instead of trying to get a wide depth of units to level 75, you need to commit to the Kaigans. And fortunately, you have a good idea, of, or at least a general idea, of when the Kaigans for certain units are coming. Like, we know Ramses is coming earlier, but we know that Mayfawn isn't going to be getting her Kaigan in Global until Halloween. Because her Kaigan is tied to the Halloween event and her Nenso. So you don't have to start farming Mayfawn probably until june so you don't have to farm her yet i mean you can she's still a great addition to the team at level 75 especially 80 when she gets her master ability but it's not like super necessary whereas someone like ramses who's going to be getting his job in like two months you're definitely going to want to start farming him earlier if he's who you want on your team another thing to mention uh you can't just rely on getting four stars to kaigen you can rely on four stars getting to 75 in a decent amount of time, but I had to farm like 200 Hayate shards in order to Kaigen him because he just never showed up in my gachas. So, <clears throat> when you start picking out your teams, what I suggest doing, look at what the units are going to look like several months in advance because you have that advantage in global that we didn't have in Japan. And... After you have the carry unit in each of your teams, let's say you have a physical fire attack unit in fire, right? So who might you want to build? Well, let I know you guys don't have her, but let's say you have Black, Mas uh, Black Killer Masamune, right? Well, Dorothy's a great unit to pair with Black Killer Masamune. Dorothy also works well as a 5-2-3 Kaigen, so she doesn't take as much investment as a 5-5-3 or a 5-5-5 Kaigen. So now you have two physical fire attack units. Well, who else can we add in? Um, Daisy. Daisy got her job plus a while back. I can't remember exactly when it was, but she's another great physical fire unit. So now we have three physical fire units. My original carry, Black Killer Masamune, Dorothy, and Daisy. Now, who else do we want? Um, Maybe let's go with a support. So maybe let's go with a uh, Noah or Emma, right? Maybe, let's go with Noah, because Noah provides a veil. And that's something that most fire units can't give, is a veil, right? So we build Noah into the team, too. So now we have a support, two physicals, and our original carry. And one of the things you do want to look for in a carry is a leader skill, which is a, in Black Masamune's case, is a 50-20 leader skill, which means that I can use Noah with impunity because it, she isn't bound into a physical fire attack team. 
So there you have it. I've built a team and I'm only going to farm three of these fire units. Let's move on to water. Let's say I get Merlinus, right? For example, we get, or maybe you get Ultima and you decide to use him as your carry. Well, now we have a water-based team. So who else do we want? Uh, maybe we want Lavina. Now, Lavina is probably not the best choice damage-wise, but she still is pretty good post Kaigen, right? Maybe we want to put Krima in there because she is forecaster, and forecasters are OP, right? And they also have a decent support set. And maybe we'll put in Annika because Annika provides a veil. So now we have Annika for Veil, Krima for damage and support, Lavina for damage, and Merlinus as the original carry. Now let's say, for instance, instead of uh, Merlinus, we got... Mm, let's say you get uh, Ankh here, right? So until Ankh gets his Kaigen leader skill, he's a 50, he's a 30, 30% uh, HP, 20% physical attack, 20% fire exploit leader skill, and he's a great physical attack unit. So who do we want to add in? Uh, maybe we want to add in Yoris because Yoris is great. Um, maybe not the best idea because you're going to need water frags for both of them, but. Let's at, go ahead and add in Shayna. You can get her nice and early. You can farm her nice and early, and she's a decent unit. Shenmei, great unit post Kaigen, right? And let's add in Anika again, because Anika has that really fast veil. So we have Anika, Shenmei, and Shayna, along with Onk as our original carry. So there you have it. I gave you two examples of three units you could farm in an element with the original carry. Now the reason I'm saying farm about three units is because you have six elements in total, which means that if you use this method, you'll be able to farm 18 units when hard quests. And I know that sounds like a lot. Global has to change the way they do AP for this to work. They need to give you guys more AP. It's that simple. Un unless they give you guys more AP as a new player, you're just kind of screwed at this point. So let's let's go through an example in each of these elements just just so that way I can really drive the point home. Let's say you get Nigel, right? And this is how I did my original carry team. Well, Nigel's great, right? But he needs a physical attack team to go with him. So Mayfon. Mayfon's a great option to go with him. Zofi. Zofi's a great option to go with him. Who else do I want? Um So I actually personally went with Rusha, which was not the best idea because she can't scale off the physical attack, but she's still a great unit. Tiona would also be a good option. So, one of these four, three of these four units on the left would be great options to go with Nigel. Um, unfortunately, the supports in Thunder are pretty much all four star, so you kind of have to rely on pulling them or farming a four star because Lucretia was not farmable until pretty recently. But maybe Fujika could go into the team as a Thunder Enchanter, or even better yet, you could just use Vanicus as a Thunder Enchanter, which is what, who I used really early, because I guarantee you're going to get a 3-star up real fast. And then all of a sudden, boom, you have a Thunder team. Let's go to Wind. Now, Wind is pretty cut and dry. You farm Ramses, you do your best to get bulked up, if you can, get Neferti as your carry, because she has an insane leader skill and 50% HP, 30% physical attack, and 20% thunder exploit. But if you can't, you can always just use Ramsey's Kaigen leader skill, because it's even his normal leader skill isn't half bad, but his Kaigen leader skill is pretty good. Um, so you want to kind of get a desert team together with Rahu as your support. So, the ideal team here would be Neferti, Rahu, Bolt, and Ramses. And I know that doesn't sound super practical, but trust me, if you can get it together, it's going to be an insanely powerful team. Uh, other honorable mentions? Um, not many. Wind doesn't have much outside of those, that group. So, for Light, now this one's actually really nice, because for Light, all you need to do is pull the Cannon Nenso. 
and then you get a free unit, a basically a free unit that gets a really good Kaigen and is a core light team member. And if you can, um, maybe add in Suzuka because Suzuka is not bad. And possibly Zane. You get a free copy of Zane. And even at 75, he's still a decent unit. And who else do we have? I suppose you could farm Neka if you want some magic. Aisha isn't going to be farmable for a very long time. Neither is Mialidiki. Um Chloe isn't a bad option to start farming. Because here's the thing. If you start farming Chloe now... That means she'll be ready when she gets good. You, you don't want to be too far behind on Chloe. Because once she gets good, she's going to become a core light team member. So maybe you get Cannon, Chloe, Zane, and... Or actually, instead, let's do Cannon, Chloe, Spica, and Suzuka as our light team. So that gives us a nice mix. And in this particular instance, we do not have a carry per se. But if you can get the Cannon, then so Cannon becomes your carry instead. So that's another in that's a bit of a difference in the situations. In this particular instance, getting a Nenso puts it makes a free character your carry instead of actually getting a limited unit. Okay, so dark is a little more difficult because there are so many limited units in dark, and it's really hard to choose one. If you can get Soul as your carry, get him. But I wouldn't like go ham for him, and I have a video explaining why. Um, as for who you want to farm in Dark, I'm just going to straight up tell you this is who you want to farm. Rosa, Jin, Gormalis, and Albea. Those four are going to be key, key Dark units. You might want to add in Maya for magic, but it's not as important. Trust me. Arbor? Although Arbor is not as important at first, she eventually gets really good when she gets her Nenso. Um, Rosa, core Dark unit. Goal, core dark unit, Jin, core dark unit. That's who you're going to want in dark. Pretty much the rest of dark that's good is non-farmable. So, there's that. So, that's my approach for a new player. Um, I know this video went on for a while, so if you're still around, thanks for sticking with me. Um, I, I would definitely use this approach to farming your units just because you're going to have a lot of choices at first and you really want to make sure your choices count because if you look back three months later and your teams aren't where you want them to be, you might need to wait another three months before they actually get there then. So I would do a little bit of research. Um, definitely ask around based on who you pull at first and almost certainly try to make sure that you get a couple carries right off the bat it's super important now i think global has this thing where they give you a free pool in the beginning um i i, I don't know too much about it i probably should have asked before i made this but i didn't because i don't know why but anyways um that's really all i have to say on the subject so if you have any questions feel free to ask in the comments if you have any questions that you specifically want me to answer like more in depth i highly suggest contacting me in the discord because one i'm a lot more active there because i have discord on my phone and i'm constantly checking it and uh two it's just discord's interface is just a lot easier for me to use because i can post pictures among other things and also other people in the discord can help you if i'm not around so anyways guys thanks for watching as always and i hope to see you next time